What's up guys, Alexander here. Today we're going to look at a question, one of the most important questions of our time. Who is more attractive, Thor or Loki? Actually what I'm reacting to is a TikTok video where a young man, a young psychologist, has claimed that women prefer Thor's body type, or excuse me, I have that backwards, women prefer Loki's body type, the skinny body type, over Chris Hemsworth or Thor. Is this the case? Well, let's look at this video and see what he says. ¿Sabías que las mujeres se encuentran más atractivo a Loki que a Thor? Como lo oyes, ya son varias las investigaciones que demuestran que los músculos representan más un símbolo de poder entre hombres que un imán para las mujeres. Sin ir más lejos, la investigación de Tracy Cox encontró que el 75% de las mujeres prefieren a los hombres con cuerpos normales y solamente un 25% a hombres con cuerpos trabajados. This young man has very high production quality in his videos. Unfortunately, the quality of the science here is very, very low. The person being referenced here, Tracy Cox, this is a tabloid writer for the Daily Mail. This is not a scientist. She is not a psychologist. This is not a scientific study. This is going to be a survey of women who opt in to respond on the street or whatever the case may be. It's important to understand that these kinds of poorly designed surveys have very little generalizability to the general population. If you ask women if they think that Thor or Loki is more attractive, you'll get different responses. Perhaps most women will, in fact, say Loki. What you have to keep in mind is there are a lot of confounds here. The biggest one being that Thor and Loki, or Chris Hemsworth and the other actor, I don't even know what his name is, these are famous people. These are actors. These are both very conventionally attractive men, albeit with different body types. If women indicate a preference for one of these actors over the other, these confounds include everything they know about each of these actors. They're not telling you if they prefer a body type over the other. They know what these men's personalities, or at least what the personalities of their characters, are like. They know that these are high-status men. They are both facially attractive, but in very, very different ways and they're wealthy men. So you have many confounds that will not carry over to if women prefer a muscular or a non-muscular body in the average man. When we look at research on bodily attractiveness and muscularity, most of this is conducted with photos that are controlled for in many, many ways. For example, it could be a photo or a drawing that has been computer edited this would be the exact same photo or the exact same drawing to be more or less muscular. This is important that it's the exact same because that controls for other factors. You typically do not see a male face in studies of bodily attractiveness. Why? Because if someone sees a male face on a body and these faces are very different and the bodies are very different, you can't distinguish between what people are saying is attractive in the face and the body. You can ask people, is the body more attractive? But because they know what the face looks like, you can't account for that unconscious influence. So in many ways, I think it is probably the case that the actor who plays Loki facially is actually more attractive. And this is something we see in a lot of research on facial attractiveness, is that averaged faces are consistently rated as the most attractive faces. And when I say averaged faces here, note I didn't say average faces, but averaged faces. The way this is studied is by getting a selection of faces, normal faces, or attractive faces, depending on the method, and putting them into a computer program that creates an average composite face. People will consistently, this is a very consistent finding across the research on facial attractiveness, guys, people will consistently rate that computer composite averaged face as more attractive than any of the individual faces that make up that averaged face. Why is this? Probably proportionality, because we also see in research on facial attractiveness that faces that have good proportions, proportions in fact that conform to the golden ratio, are consistently rated as more attractive. In men, we see masculine faces are attractive, 
but not the most masculine faces, or the most sexually dimorphic faces. If you think about the most sexually dimorphic or masculine faces, guys, at the extreme end, think about an actor like The Rock. And that's not even the most extreme example. Think about something like a gorilla. Most people do not rate these as the most attractive faces. Instead, I want you to think about male models. Go to Google and plug in male model and look at the faces of all of the men that come up. These men usually have a little bit of sexual dimorphism, but not a great deal. They have proportional faces and they have a strong mix of masculine and feminine features. And this probably has to do with something that is consistent in evolutionary explanations for facial attractiveness, and that's a kind of dual signaling. Essentially that very masculine faces, very aggressive faces, they signal, okay, this is someone who perhaps can protect, but it's also someone who may be very aggressive and may be a threat. So what we actually see works really well in physical attractiveness when we don't isolate faces and bodies is when the face is kind of a good mix of dimorphic and non-dimorphic features and the body is muscular. And this is what we see again in a lot of male models, especially male models that are chosen for their physique. These are usually men who are fairly low body fat. They have muscular or athletic bodies. And I'm not talking about very large bodybuilders here, guys. There is actually very little, and I think I, I might even say there is no research looking at these mass monster bodybuilders and the level of attractiveness that they have. I don't think it exists. And even when you look at a lot of research on bodily muscularity and attractiveness, the most muscular depictions of the bodies, be it a photo of an actual body, a computer-generated body, or a drawing altered to be more muscular, these are not typically giant muscular bodies. They're athletic and above athletic, yes, but they're not, they're not huge bodybuilders. So how attractive would someone like Chris Hemsworth, Thor, and his body, which is, you know, at this point large enough where if he gets lean, he could compete on a bodybuilding stage. How attractive is that to most women? We can't say from the research. We can say that Chris Hemsworth is himself a sex symbol more so probably than, than the man who plays, who plays Loki, but of course he's also the star of the movie and this does not come down to his body type specifically as the only explanatory variable. In contrast to this survey by uh, the tabloid author Tracy Cox, I would like to reference you guys to a study I made a short video about earlier and I will just touch on it again for a moment, but this was a meta-analysis published this year of 96 studies on bodily sexual dimorphism. Sexual dimorphism being, of course, the degree to which a body is more or less masculine, which is coming down to things like height, like shoulder width, like uh, muscularity, and signs of physical strength, and, they also, and other things that are not whole body, but things like digit ratio, index to palm digit ratio. This, this meta-analysis <clears throat> of 96 studies 177,000 participants across these studies found the only two consistent predictors of bodily attractiveness were muscularity and physical strength. Everything else, even height, guys, even height was not as consistent of a predictor. And the effect sizes here were medium to large. So this wasn't just a small effect being detected. This was a pretty substantial effect. And this is why I think it is actually an evidence or research-based position to tell you that getting jacked, guys, lifting, getting big enough where when you're wearing a normal shirt, people can say, this is a muscular dude, as opposed to just getting very lean, is probably one of the better things that you can do that most men, that all men can do to elevate their own physical attractiveness. Now, there is a great deal of variation in what a woman or a man finds attractive. You can see this, for example, in the Loki versus Thor debate. You can see this in something like the K-pop stars, who are very popular and attractive, but are definitely not the cup of tea for all women. If you look at men who are rated as above average attractiveness, within those above average attractiveness men, there's a great deal of variation in what one woman will consider attractive and what another will not. And some of this comes down to what is called assortative mating or the tendency to select partners who are similar to us. This includes 
almost everything that you can think of, guys. People pick partners based on their status background, their educational background, similar levels of income, on hobbies, on personality traits. Height is assortively selected for, and so is something like physical activity and obesity. As a matter of fact, there's research showing that obesity is assortively selected for. So when you look at these studies that say, ah, women prefer a K-pop body, or women prefer Loki over Thor, women prefer a dad bod, or women prefer a skinny fat guy, you have to ask yourself, okay, but who are those women picking as mates? If you yourself are a man who is very interested in fitness and bodybuilding, are you going to want to date a woman who is not? Are you going to want to date a woman who does not take care of her body or her health? Probably not. If you're someone who goes to the gym regularly and your pool of friends is someone who is, or, and not just your pool of friends, but the pool of people that you come into physical contact with that you have not even spoken to on a daily basis, they're going to be people into physical activities. Do you think those women are into skinny fat dude? Or do you think those women who lift, who go to the gym, who do exercise, are more likely to be into a healthy guy who lifts, who is muscular? Related to this, something else you should consider is that if there is X percent of women who are into muscular men and X percent of women who are into dad bods or skinny men, you will have less competition if you are a muscular man because there are fewer muscular men. And anecdotally, I think this is why you rarely see a jacked bodybuilder who is single. And I know there's a meme, the gym cells, the incels who work out and go to the gym. Guys, I have not seen this in real life. I've never met an actually jacked incel. There are bodybuilders in the IFBB and at the amateur level that I see who facially, they're not pretty guys. They're horrendous and they have girlfriends, they have beautiful wives. These are men who are driven, they're confident, they're muscular, and that is attractive. And it certainly overcomes, at least in these isolated cases, uh, their lower facial attractiveness. Another point to touch on here has to do with how men and women rate attractiveness in faces. In the video that I referenced, this young man says, ah, you will only attract gym bros. Pero mientras sigas pensando que tu carisma reside en el tamaño de tus pectorales, seguirás teniendo más éxito con tu gym bro que con las mujeres. And of course that's a meme that the more jacked you get and the more into fitness you get, the more men you will attract and the fewer women you will attract. And it may be the case that being buff and jacked will attract many men, but what you should understand is that inter-rater correlation between ratings of attractiveness for men and women is very high. It's between 0.8 and 0.9, or 80 and 90%. And this is for ratings of general attractiveness, ratings for facial attractiveness as well. Basically, what men rate as attractive and what women rate as attractive in men is the same. Sometimes you will see in these uh, YouTube channels where men rate faces, and that sort of thing, people will post a comment and they'll say, oh, you can't believe what a man says about facial rating, it only matters what women says. Okay, so ideally you would want to go with what women say, you know, that's going to have more validity, in uh, more real-world validity, more predictive validity. But it's going to be very, very close, because the correlation between what men rate is facially attractive and what women rate is facially attractive in men across sexes is high. It's high. We recognize attractive faces. Even babies recognize attractive faces. Babies respond to attractive faces differently from unattractive faces. So don't buy the meme, guys, that it's going to attract a bunch of gym bros only and women are not going to be attracted or it's going to be some opposite thing. It's not the case, guys. That is not what the research shows. We're going to touch on a final point here, and that's when we look at any research, it's kind of important to have a theory that explains the finding. If we can't explain the finding, if there's a correlation or something, uh, we have to really wonder what's going on. And evolutionary psychology, personality psychology, it has theories that explain why women find muscular bodies more attractive. Muscular bodies are an evolutionary signal for a man being more physically fit, for what's called a disease resistance. Having more testosterone means that the man essentially can resist disease better in a paradoxical way, and, and I'll make a different video on that topic because it's kind of a complex topic. Uh, having a more muscular body, a taller body, etc., etc., means that a man is stronger and able to defeat more rivals. He's able to protect the woman he is with and the offspring. He's able to acquire resources if it's hunting or foraging 
or running and chasing down an animal, whatever it may be. So, the theories, the evolutionary explanations are on the side of muscularity being preferred over being a tiny, weak dude. Anyway, guys, I hope that you learned something from this video. That's about all that I wanted to say on this topic for the moment. If you liked it, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you get notifications, and I hope I can talk to you guys again very, very soon.